Welcome to the Android Ally. The Android Ally is an Android Studio plugin. The primary goal is to encourage the production of more accessible apps by lowering the learning curve when it comes to talkback and changing device and emulator settings. When making apps accessible, it is designed with a variety of shortcuts and a screen reader that can be controlled from the plugin user interface. In this video, I'll be covering the installation of the plugin as well as the installation of the developer-focused version of TalkBack called TalkBack for Developers, and a quick tutorial on how to use TalkBack from the plugin. I'll then go through the other tabs, namely the Display, Settings, and Debug tabs, and show you how they work. I'll finish by telling you about the upcoming features and where you can find the source code. Let's dive in. To install the Android Ally plugin, Open up Android Studio and head to Settings and open Plugins. Make sure that the Marketplace tab is selected and in the search type Android Ally. Ally, A-L-L-Y or A-11-Y is a common abbreviation for accessibility. Once you see the plugin, you can click Install in the right hand panel. This will add the Android Ally to your IDE. You'll be able to find the Android Ally in the bottom or side panels of your development environment. On the left-hand side of the Android Ally, you'll be able to see the list of connected devices and emulators. If no devices appear, please click on the Refresh button. TalkBack for Developers is a fork of Google's screen reader for Android with additional features made specifically for developers. It allows developers to control TalkBack with Android debug bridge commands and test our apps without the need for gestures. Because it is a fork of TalkBack, it is feature complete with the latest open source version of TalkBack. For short, I call it TB4D. If you notice the Install TB4D button on the right hand side of the device details, it means that the plugin has detected that TalkBack for Developers is not installed on the device. The button allows you to install TalkBack for Developers on each device you want. You can also click on the Information button to be taken to the Explanation website. After you click the Install button, you will be notified that TalkBack for Developers has been installed. Please note that this is not for Wear OS. This should be coming sometime soon. If you do not install TalkBack for Developers on a device, it just means that the TalkBack panel will be ineffective, no matter whether the device is selected or not. If you would like to read more as to why, please visit the web page on your screen. One of the advantages of being able to control TalkBack with the user interface is now we can control it on our emulators. I will be demonstrating testing with TalkBack for developers on an emulator. In the left-hand device panel, make sure you have selected the device on which you want to test. In the right-hand panel, make sure the TalkBack tab is selected. Turn TalkBack on by clicking the On button. For a first time run, we'll be taken into the TalkBack tutorial. I would like to demonstrate to you some of the aspects of this tutorial to show you how this user interface works. The first thing we need to do is navigate to the Do Not Show This Again checkbox and check it. We do this by tapping the Next button and we activate the checkbox using the Tap button. We can also select Not Now. Also take note that on the emulator, the spoken feedback appears at the bottom of the screen. In the tutorial, let's go to the next screen. Here we learn about exploring by touch. You can touch an element on the screen to focus on it. Next, we'll learn about scrolling and how that is a two finger gesture. We just need to get to the end of this list. Here we learn about system actions. You can open up the menu at any time by clicking the menu button and if actions appear, they will either appear in the menu or you can use the actions button to open that menu specifically. To exit these menus, you can use the back button. Next up is menu and controls. I'd really like to show you how to change the granularity, also known as reading controls. Talkback users find it significantly useful to navigate via headings. We can do this with the Android Ally by choosing the headings granularity and tapping next and previous. 
This is significantly easier than having to know and perform two individual gestures. An additional feature only in TalkBack for developers is the blockout mode. When you turn blockout mode on, the entire screen will go black so you can put your skills to the test. You will have to navigate away in order to activate blockout mode. Please remember, always test with real users. This is a tool to help you as a developer to be more proficient, but it is no substitute for someone with lived experience. Let's turn off the blockout view and exit the tutorial. We can also give TalkBack for Developers the permissions it needs as an accessibility service. In the Display tab, we can modify the device's display density, which will make everything on the screen look bigger or smaller based on the density you choose. You will also be able to quickly change between light mode and dark mode as well as toggle animations on and off. However, you may have to force a restart on your app. This is because the apps normally read the setting once as opposed to subscribing to it. The next two settings, color inversion and color correction, cannot be seen when mirroring the device. So I'm going to film my screen to demonstrate these changes with a camera. On the right, I have my device as it is mirrored and on the left is a camera feed directly to my physical device. When I select color inversion to be on, you can see my device does change automatically, but it's not reflected by the mirroring. I can also turn it off. I can also choose from different types of color correction so that I can see how colors react with each other for different types of color blindness. The reason why that this doesn't come through in mirroring has got to do with the Android operating system and the layers that are being applied when rendering. In the settings tab of the plugin, you can change the font scale by using the slider. Official accessibility criteria state that there should be no loss of information when scaling up to 200%. You can also toggle bold and high contrast fonts from this menu. In addition, I've given you access to the time to take action setting in Android. This will impact how long toast and snack bar messages remain on screen before automatically disappearing. But you should also consider using it for any scenario where the user might miss important information. Adding this to your apps shows a sincere respect for the user and is a differentiator from other platforms. The idea is that this amount of time is added to the delay time. You can also toggle captions and audio descriptions from this menu, but like animations, it might require a restart of your app. Please note, these have more settings involved with them. For example, captions has an entire font configuration screen for users. While it's important to have buttons inside your app with regard to captions and audio descriptions, it's also important that your apps respect the settings that can be found inside the operating system. In the Debug tab, you can open a variety of screens from your device. The most useful screen for me is being able to open the locale. Not so much for changing into a language I don't understand, but rather being able to find my way back from a screen when I want to change it back. Once I've changed my language, I find it incredibly useful and it saves me a lot of time. You cannot change the language of your operating system using the Android debug bridge, so this is the quickest I can make it. You can also show or hide the layout bounds if you have an eye for the touch target size of your components. And you can toggle showing taps so that when you do device recordings, people can see where you're tapping the screen. I've also added shortcuts for the accessibility scanner, voice access, and switch access services. While these do not have Android debug controls within them, they are useful tools that I recommend you use for testing. The accessibility scanner, which can be found on the Play Store, is an excellent tool from Google for identifying accessibility issues within your app. Voice access, which comes installed on most Android devices, is used to control the device with voice commands. 
Once you turn the service on, you'll need to activate it from the system menu. And there are certain phrases you can use, such as show grid, tap component, and scroll down. Switch access is typically used by people with motor disabilities, and I recommend turning off the auto select feature for development. Typically, developers use the volume keys as their controllers for next and select. You can read more on the Need Help page. In future updates, I hope to add being able to lock orientation on a device. This has become a little more tricky in a multi-screen folding device world. I would also like to add a checklist for developers to help them remember what goes into making an app accessible. I'll also be adding a font reset button and a tab of useful links. The source code for the Android Ally plugin is available at the link on your screen and you are welcome to raise a pull request or request new features. If you would like to have a look at what I'm working on, you can find that information on the Trello board. It's my sincere hope that this plugin makes your life a lot easier when making your apps accessible. Please remember, there is no substitute for testing with people who have the lived experience and will be impacted the most by our applications. All the best and bye for now.